Hi, today I want to walk you through the GitHub for Windows application uh, and uh, kind of share with you some things that I've learned. And uh, I just want to pref pref uh, prefix this session with I really don't use Get that much. This I've never really used it for my own projects. Uh, I've been using Mercurial for most of the last year, um, Subversion, uh, TFS, and such. So. Um, this whole get thing is is foreign to me primarily because it's generally done through a command line, which I don't do command line utilities. Um, uh, <laughs> it's 2012; it's time to grow up. So the uh, GitHub for Windows client, uh, first I really like because they did a Metro application, and I love Metro. Um, so let's just walk through what we've got going on here. First is a, a list of your local repositories, things that you've either grabbed from uh, GitHub through the application or uh, have added locally uh, through the application as well. And uh, so these are some of the ones that I've added. I haven't uh, done a whole lot yet, mostly just experimenting. Over here on the right is the README page for the project. And then here's your account uh, with uh, your actual repositories. Right now I've only got the one set up uh, with the one local uh, here. And then I'm also uh, advisory to a Microsoft project for a mobile web application and that's why I'm part of that group. So let's go add a repository and what I want to do is go grab a, the actual address on my hard drive for this simple little web application I set up for this demo and we'll call this the GitHub YouTube demo. There we go. And it's going to create a folder under um, Generally, you're my documents, but I guess it's retaining where I, I put this stuff, set this stuff up last time, and so I actually want to change that repository. Cannot have special character. Oh, I had the space in here. You can't do spaces, and I believe that is because uh, it's using the URL, and you can't really do that. Okay, um, now we're gonna have check to push to GitHub, and that will create the repository for us under my profile uh, on GitHub. Now if I wanted to make it private I could check this but you do have to have a paid account as it says right there. Now you could always upgrade and stuff um, and, and everything. And maybe one of these days I'll, I'll create a paid GitHub account. We'll see how this goes. And there's still something that it doesn't like here. Oh, because I've I tried this out. We'll just do this. Special. And we'll change that. Oh, yeah. It wants to change that for us. We don't want to do that. All right, let's go change our folder. Let's call this special. And there we go. And let's go put that in there. Now we'll go fix this. See, this is a learning experience, folks. I am, as you can tell, I haven't done a whole lot with this, but I do want to experiment. I think this is a great way to do it. All right, so let's go do this. Let's go create the repository. And there it is. I don't have a readme file yet. If I go to my profile here on GitHub, you see the site here with the you haven't done anything uh, page. So let's go do something. Let me double click on this. Now this is going to take me to uh, the repository view here. And let's just set this up. Set this up. All right. And let's commit. Hopefully we are committing to the same page. Let's go open this and explore and let's just make sure. Aha, it is different. This got me in trouble the last time I tried this out. All right, so let's just go copy these files over there go. Perfect. And now see it automatically recognized that me copying those two files in there. Now adding some files and we're going to commit this. And now that's committed locally. Now if we go back here and I refresh the page, I'm still going to get the you haven't done anything uh, content. And so we need to publish this. So what we're going to have to do is hit publish, and it's going to push this up to GitHub for us. And 
Right now we get a little feedback with the ellipsis after publishing, and now we get the feedback that we are in sync with what is up on GitHub. So if I refresh this time, we can see the pages, and uh, everything is happy now. So if I go look at the uh, little index.html, you can see I've got a GitHub Hello World uh, markup here. Um, now, if I go back up here, one thing I want to show you is if you were on Windows, I've noticed, uh, I don't have anything but Windows, uh, per se. Um, well, I do have the Android tablet and the iPad and such, but I haven't noticed on there. I don't generally do source control on the tablets yet. Anyway, so i got this clone in Windows, and if I do this, it will launch a little dialog, which is a special file type uh, kind of thing, and uh, it's associated with the GitHub for Windows application, and I'll just say, if you say allow, it will uh, add this to your GitHub uh, repository, which is how I've added some other uh, things. So if I go, uh, let's see, go find somebody up here. Something that has been changed. This is my list of stuff. Let's go up here. And here's some stuff that I am watching. All right, so like uh, the underscore library, that's a popular JavaScript library. And if we go clone that in Windows, and I say allow, it's going to add it up here to my dashboard. As you can see, it is coming in, and it is setting it up, and it actually put it under the folder where I last was. So that's really good. So it defaults to the My Documents folder, so you might want to watch that. But evidently, once you create uh, a, a folder, a uh, repository, it looks above that, and that's where it's going to start putting stuff. So that's very interesting that it did that for me. And another thing, if you notice, the data vis visualization here I like, too. It's showing the graph of activity for this particular project, um, which is probably fairly analogous to if you go back up here. Uh, if I go... Uh, you can see... Well, let's go back to the underscore, and we'll go look at the document cloud and you can see the little bar chart kind of graph thing down here representing actual activity and it's replicating that for us up here that is really cool if we go to the jQuery uh, library you get the same kind of graph and you can so you can just really see uh, just how active these things uh, really are and that is really really cool okay so if I do this I can open the repo and it's going to show me all the files that are up here. I can collapse them. It shows me all the deltas on the file for the last one. It shows me all the uh, the pushes that were made. So this is a totally different way of uh, visualizing data as compared to, say, the Tortoise Mercurial client that I've gotten really familiar with, um, with the uh, what I call the railroad track branches and things like that. Um, now, as far as branches, uh, you can create new branches. Let's go back to my uh, little thing here. And go back to my YouTube special, and we'll just create second branch. All right, we'll create that puppy, and there we go. And let's go. We don't need that anymore. Let's go open this up in Web Matrix. This is a neat little trick for Web Matrix. Da, da, da. If the context menu will arrive, there we go. I can just open up Web Matrix this way. That's my favorite web editing tool right now. And we'll just make a little change here. Come on. Hopefully, one of these days I'll have an SSD drive. Okay. And we'll open that index file. And we'll put a paragraph in here branch to just for the fun of it now let's go back over here it has already um, picked up that we've got some changes and there we go we're gonna publish and see what happens here in sync let's go back up here to my repository YouTube special and doo -doo -doo. I'm not really sure how to see the branches. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Should work here. All right. So if we go back to the other branch, to do that, you just click on the branch you want. 
Oh, you know what? I probably didn't like change it or something. So anyway, but uh, that's a general walkthrough of the GitHub for Windows application. Again, I'm not really uh, a big Git user yet, so this is all extremely new to me. But I really like this a heck of a lot better than dealing with the command line, and I think most people will too. Um, plus, it's Metro. Uh, it's fairly intuitive. There's no real help, and literally, I spent like 20 or 30 minutes dinking around before I decided to make a recording of this. So that's kind of how quick this can uh, can get up to speed for you. So, all right. Well, good luck, and uh, hope you enjoy your time using Git. Thanks a lot.